Uh, this video is going to be about a post adorn setup. This means that we are using an adorned and I'm using the most budget option which is large clusters and for this one here and some of the other ones I'm, I'm missing skill jet, skill sockets here. Uh, you know they're, they're really shit, they're really shit. There's just two sockets. Now I'm pretty sure the price dropped down a lot. I would, I would highly recommend adorn because it gives you a lot more it raises the ceiling for the build far more. Of course, the end game will be voices, of course. But for now, I'm just using eight socket um, larges, and the rest of the video will be about a dawn. Now, before dawns, and you still mage blood, I would say your build would remain the same as the P16 PUB that I showed you in the first video, uh, without without dawn, and. You just add, you're just gonna add on mage button, use the flask, get extra defenses, and that's it. Uh, it's already at dawn when the, the build starts to shine. Okay, let's begin this with Stormboss Mine. Now, Stormboss Mine is the the major change we want over Pyroclast Mine because Stormboss Mine gives us 4% increased damage taken to nearby enemies up to 150%. So 4% per mine. Now, we can throw up to 15 mines, which is our cap. And when we combine this with the Demolition Specialist, 150%, each mine is now 10% increased damage. Meaning, with 15 mines, we are getting the full 150% increased damage. This is a basic 2.5 times damage multiplier, just by throwing some, throwing some mines down. Now, I must make sure to re reiterate that we do not detonate them. This is not for detonation. It's only for the aura around the mine for nearby enemies. That's it. Okay, let's go through some tattoos. Now, tattoos are very strong options you can add to your build. On my build, I have included tattoos such as crit reduction times four, this is to allow me to combine a Corruptor Cloak 50% with the Armor Mastery 30% and 4 tattoos for a total of 100% reduced damage taken. Now, this only reduces the extra damage, but not the fact that it's critical. Additionally, you can choose to use Chance to Poison 
if you require it on your to give yourself more poison however these are mostly lingering uh ch tattoos that i have which is why you saw me using dex helmet uh sorry int helmet now moving on we can use suppress um suppress is very good if you need to cut your suppression in some way you missing some missing suppressions you can add, add tattoos to your tree here we always have way too much decks so it doesn't matter i think we need 112 decks total so you keep you just keep chucking on tattoos for suppression to get free stats right now lastly if you are if you are using valerian and not machinations right you can have life regen so life regen can also be improved by having tattoos here which honestly I should scale because I am using uh, machinations now so these are basically useless for me so that's also not an option some other options you may consider are flash duration, flask effects, life percent if that's in I think it's gone though um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of options play around with what you have because tattoos are very very good to add to finishing touches on your build now let's begin with a discussion on Valerium vs Skyforth. Both options are very good. You are of course trading different benefits for different benefits. Valerium is good because it allows you to have life regen. That's one of the downsides I added to this boot way back then, which is now haunting me 10 years later. Now, the reason why Skyforth is really good in Ultimatum is because a lot of the times, regen is often crippled by the ultimate itself, or from the map mods, and so on. Like, life regen isn't too important. Now, in T17s, however, life regen will help you a lot in Shape of Touch rares. Not this one here, but there are some maps with Shape of Touch. And if, you know, if you've seen them, you know what I mean. There are Shape of Beams flying you, and there's Degen on the floor flying you. It's, it's a lot of Degen. And having some life regen is quite good. So by using a Valyrium, we now swap from a boot, from Skyforth to a rare boot. Now, of course, we lose life in the hit here, meaning that to use a Valyrium and have your damage, you really do need to have the Vitality Watcher's Eye, because that's our instant source of recovery. This is, I would say, Valyrium would be our st uh, a consideration after Mage Blood and the fight. So this is going to be a, a, a further consideration will be the reservation on Skyforth. Now, reservation, if you, if you look carefully, you can see that our life reservation will actually, well, that didn't work, did it? Um, well, uh, you, you just get the reservation here <laughs> helps you in the reservation on your skill, meaning your defiance mechanics will give you more healing from life reservation. Um, a few more considerations is when you use Skyforth with machinations, um, the downside isn't there anymore. So it's a good option there as well. Okay, let's begin with my first setup after Mage Blood, but before Original Sin. So before Original Sin, as you can see as a Ruby skin here. We still need two consuming darks. This is because we need the conversion of fire to chaos to apply poisons. Now, this setup will utilize Eldritch Battery here, Divine Flesh, which you can opt to take out, and importantly, in early T17s, this Stun Mastery here. This will give you the cold critical avoidance uh, that you require to keep Blood Notch functioning in most of the T17 maps. Now, I prefer this one over the Chaos Mastery here. Chaos Mastery here, sorry. Because in the most cases, there are a lot of monsters that will, you know, they, they, they will crit you, but before you can poison them, or you can't poison them at, at all, like Katarina. And this will mean that this one is has a high uptime more of the time. And when you add Delirium, Beyond, Ambush, etc., there are so many hits against you that it's almost always up. So, important to note is that you can still opt to choose between Valyrium or Skyforce in this setup. However, it is very, very important that you keep two consuming darks. I will point out that uh, 
the corruption damage over time is very 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 good on one or both consuming darks uh, before original sin because the power level is extraordinary for me even with original sin at times i was fighting t17s with two two of these because i could use a, a ventos ring times two for some extra magic find which was pretty helpful at times you know it's not too bad now the first setup after original sin so i'll put it on is to actually allow us to use a shield. This is because, as I just mentioned, we don't need the Chaos Convention anymore. So we can take one off. And I'll put on my shield. Now this shield just gave us a lot of life, as you just saw. 9,100, 8,300, it's a lot of life. The only thing I care about on this shield here is the maximum life of 172 up to 180. Okay, so this is a huge amount of life, which is very good. Now I picked up these corruptions for a divine. So Fistic and Az, very good. You can also choose to use other shields like uh, like Kong Mings if you want. There's some, some other shields you want to use. Uh, you can also swap your dagger to a Darkseer. However, for me, the Darkseer is bugged. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, where it, I, I don't know where it is anymore. It's a Darkseer here. For me, when I use the Darkseer, it causes everything to lag server-side. So I avoid this, but this is also very good if it, does, if it does not lag for you, okay? You can put it on and it gives you a huge amount of life. A huge amount of life. And on POB, Malediction actually gives you more damage than the damage over time of Consuming Dark. So Malediction is very good. However, you will need to make sure that you have tattoos that give you the poison chance or enough poison chance from your jewels um, like here to reach 100. So it's important to keep that in mind. That's my first setup after Original Sin. So let's talk about upgrading your scepter. Now this scepter I have here, I crafted myself. Uh, I was very lucky. Very, very lucky. I slammed the suffix T15 damage on my first try, which would on average cost I think 4 to 5 divines per try and 40 attempts so 200 to 250 attempts to divines just for the fire damage suffix now I've chosen to use plus 1 all skill gems and plus 1 all physical because if we look carefully unearth gives us level 83 from a level plus 2 here but also with this right unearth 83 however when you upgrade from a dagger it's actually only 81, and this gives us 82, 80, 83. The reason why uh, corpse level is important is because high level corpses have more corpse life, and it gives us more damage with DD. Now, the alternative prefix here is to have a fire damage natural, which is a 40 weighting, I believe, out of 70,000. So, good luck with that with a Isling Unveiled Chaos Damage, which is also a pretty low weighting on the Unveil table, and that will be the best slot. However, I would say that costs maybe like 10,000, 20,000 Divines. <laughs> so, good luck with that. Um, if you'd like to craft it, I think it will cost you several hundred Divines for this exact same scepter. Of course, as a result, if you'd like to mirror this after I divine it, it is completely free like it's op optional up to you if you want to mirror it it's free uh alternatively you could also craft your own using graveyard so i've checked the graveyard if you would like to craft it cheaper i would, so I, would I think it is best to get a double fracture plus one or skill gems and a damage over time multiplier as a fracture on graveyard however i believe with the limited graveyard slots for fractured and minus prefix and minus suffix, you're down to around 70 graveyards, and uh, I think it's like one in 12. So you need to get one. You need to fill your graveyard, fill your graveyard up 12 entire times on average for a double fracture. And if you can't be fucked, well, you can bear it for free. And this would be an upgrade, I think. Uh, after original sin, yeah. After original sin, I would not bother with this until you get original sin, for sure. 
So this is if there's anyone with that much currency already, then yeah, you can't break to it. Yes, and is it? It is a huge damage increase for bosses and so on. So moving on to my final and live end game setup, I am actually using a machinations. Now, why would I use a machinations? It's because I would like to convert this jewel here back here and I will add in this jewel here this is a little pride with a rakiana and this gives us tempered by war tempered by war when combined with divine flesh for machinations gives us 100% conversion of cold to fire and chaos this means a initial hit of a cold critical is converted to fire and chaos meaning we are no longer being crit by cold this means that we do not need any source of like anti-crit here or anti-crit here as a mitigation against cold crits this allows us to guarantee the functionality of blood launch now the next cool thing about this shield is we can take wicked ward by turning on wicked ward we now have un interruptible life recharge of 1.8k per second which is a lot a lot a lot now as i mentioned earlier we are now using divine flesh so we have chaos res more more chaos res um i i messed up the res resistances swapping the bills around but uh after i fix them you notice that i actually have <clears throat> zero energy shield now why do i have zero energy shield that's because after some testing done by Little Sad Sand, uh, your stun chance avoidance is actually calculated on your current energy shield. Meaning, if you have zero current uh, zero current ES, then you will be treated as zero ES. Meaning, this will proc your cast and stuns as if you had no energy shield. And it's very good because now we do not need old battery. This is a huge discovery. So this is a great way to utilize life regen into the build as life recharge, even though we are using Skyforth by using machinations. So we do lose our last sacrifice that is not going to be enabled because the cost of use utilization is too high. And that is my current final build after I, I redo my gear because I've been swapping everything around, um, res resistances and so on. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the updated and I guess progression for endgame T17 maps. Um, and that's it, thank you very much.